I'm going to show you every single step on how you can make a bioactive terrarium complete with a waterfall and an integrated fog system. I hope you enjoy this video enough to consider liking and subscribing. The first thing you're going to need is an enclosure. We found this one from a good friend of ours at Scott's Inverts. His name was Scott, believe it or not. Now with every exoterra that is second hand, it's always wise to just go over it, check all the hinges, check the clips work on the top, check there's no holes in the mesh on the very top. Then we need to check the door lock. Does it work? Does it open? Do the door hinges work perfectly fine? We have dropped rather lucky with this one. It just needs a good clean, not only on the bottom, but the calcium deposits that are also on the side. We'll show you a great little trick on how to clean that shortly. But first, we need to check if it's watertight. Because we are adding a pump into this, there is going to be a little bit of a pond. So it's absolutely vital at this stage to actually check if it is watertight. If there is a problem, if it does leak, we can easily drain it out now and reseal it. It looks like we dropped really lucky with this one. And then it comes around to the actual cleaning of the calcium deposits that you do see on the side of the glass on this Exoterra. You'll need your hot soapy water, an X-Acto knife, a blade of some sort. It must be a sharp blade. What you need to do is put the hot soapy water all over the surface, use the razor scraper and the scour inside of the sponge and give it a good scrape. Be warned if you do use a blunt knife on the glass, it will scratch the glass. And if there is any residue left over, you may need to go over it once more. This can be a tedious task to do all the corners, but it is well worth it in the end. The next task is to lay the enclosure down on its back. We're gonna start getting ready to foam it. If you are doing this and you have forward opening doors, please secure them like this. They do break, I've learned this the hard way. So let's talk through what you're gonna need to use to make the background. You're gonna need some expanding foam, external use only, the colour doesn't matter to me because I'm going to use brown silicone and cover it with that. I do tend to go through quite a lot, so I have got a lot. Something to put on the silicone with. Some plant pots to adhere into the background. Some log wood. This was responsibly sourced from a local forest. It is safe to use. It has been treated well. And some internal equipment we're going to need for our pond. But let's start with these two tubes. One's square, one's round. and The round one has also had a taper cut into it. These are going to be one for our fogging system and one for our our electrical cables that to go with the pump for the waterfall we're going to build they go into each corner one for the fogger one for the waterfall. then we have to prepare these plant pots by adding in a little bit of drainage for when they do go into the background now for the creative part we get to place our logwood where we think it would look the best the most natural become the most useful for our animals and to be able to support plant growth if we decide to put some in the background I'm quite happy with the way this is turning out. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. And now time for the scary part, the expanding foam. Give it a really good shake. Be careful where you do put it, but it's gonna be there to secure the background in and give us a good background base to be able to carve into our desired shape. Don't worry about putting too much on because you can always carve it away. And don't worry about getting it over the lip of the lid because again, you can carve it away nicely. Once we do have that first layer of foam down and ready to go, we can start adding in the plant pots, forcing the plant pots into the background and then foaming over the plant pots. Eventually we will be drilling a hole underneath the plant pot to allow for extra drainage. Now although I will be foaming the sides of this enclosure, while it's wet right now I want to get some just over the logwood to help secure it to the sides. But once it's laid down it's just a case of leave it for a good 24 hours just to let it cure, let it fully expand, good enough for you to carve. Now when it has set and you are ready to carve, I use a knife and a razor scraper. It's got a handle on it which makes it easier and I just go over everything. I do the bottom part because that's where the substrate's gonna leave and then you've got to get rid of every single shiny area. And that's simply because the silicon, which is one of the next steps, won't adhere to the foam if it is shiny. Unfortunately, it does dry shiny, so you have to get every little area off. But this is a great opportunity to carve in whatever sort of design you want, so it's a great way to get creative once again. Unfortunately, this does make quite the mess. Let's stand it up and have a look and just see what it looks like now. I personally think I'm gonna need to do one of the sides 
So that's what we'll do now. The joy with doing this means I can stick another piece of wood on the side just like this. It's going to look absolutely amazing so it's well worth the effort. The next thing we need to do is put the enclosure on its side, on the side down that we're going to foam. Put the piece of wood back and start foaming again. We do the entire process once again except this time I'm going to add in another plant. Again, just done exactly the same as before, a few holes in the bottom, push it into the background and foam over it. Now I had some leftover expanding foam in the jar so what I've done I let it get really sticky, dried quite a lot, I left it for about an hour and I figured the stuff in the jar might still work for a feeding ledge on the other side. So as it was dry I turned the enclosure over started making a feeding ledge still had some foam left so i added a planter in there as well i can't wait to see the animals in this enclosure when it's finished then it was a simple case of stand the enclosure up and do you remember the two tunnels we put on the back corners we just had to clear them out from any expanding foam really make it accessible for the fogger to come out that was quite the challenge we just dug a big hole in the foam so that the fog can escape into the enclosure making a really nice atmosphere and creating the best humidity for this species then as previous it was just a simple case of carving the whole background this is a tedious task but you can really get creative with it and you can really make the enclosure your own don't worry if you did put too much foam on to start with and it does expand much bigger than you expect because you can carve it down to whatever sort of style you actually want so for me i'm going to be taking an awful lot off this because this has expanded more than i expected but i am rather chuffed with how it has turned out now comes the tedious part we're going to start covering the background in substrate and silicon word of warning it does have to be extremely dry all the way through the different layers of the substrate if it is damp or the slightest little bit of moisture it won't adhere to the background but the first point of call is to clean the background remove any loose foam brush it up stick it in a little pot and get it out of the way tip the enclosure onto the back so that you can get to the underneath of all of the actual foam background while it's stood up or lying down it's tricky to get to so it's extremely wise to do this once again if you have got front opening doors it's worth supporting them top tip to make this bit a little bit quicker if you cut the nozzle down right near the bottom it's a lot bigger and the silicon comes out a lot more easier and a lot bigger now to connect it all up together and we can start silicon in the background be warned it does get rather messy so you might want to wear some gloves if this is your first attempt at doing a background like this it might be worth starting off in small areas to start with do one little corner get it sorted move on to the next little corner it can be a very tedious job but the aim of it is to cover the background in silicon quite thickly after you've covered a set area all you need to do is get some extremely dry substrate and press it onto the background press it nice and firm so it really does get embedded into the silicon to make it a lot more long lasting and a lot more durable now for the animals that are going into this enclosure we really do need to make sure all the little holes are filled in perfectly so make sure you do get all the little aspects the little holes in the wood the holes where the foam has been carved out you need to get every little aspect covered so once you've finished in one area simply move over to another area more silicon spread it all around add more substrate Slowly but surely it will start looking like a proper terrarium background. After 24 hours, once the silicon has adhered to the background and the substrate has adhered to the silicon, we like to give it a brush off just to make sure we haven't missed any little areas. If we have, we can then go over it again in that one little area and finish it off. We then start paying close attention to all the little creases, the crevices where these animals could potentially hide or could potentially get out. That's where we run silicon over those various little areas, a little bit more heavier than usual. We give it a clean first and then we put more silicon over those little areas when we can spot them. Paying extremely close attention to where the foam meets the glass and where the foam meets the wood. After all this tedious work and this really nice effort, it took me a good three days to get this far, but it does look amazing once it's finished. Just check this out now that the background is complete. I'm really happy with how it's turned out. Time to let it cure for 24 hours. Our next stage after letting it cure is attaching the vines. If you'd like to see how I actually made these vines, please click on the link in the top right corner of this video. There's a full instructional video just there. 
We fasten these to the background using stainless steel screws. That way they won't corrode, they won't rust and it's going to be a long term fix. But don't worry, the screws won't be on show at the end because we do cover these in silicon and more substrate just to make sure it blends in and gives it that natural look. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. But now it's time to move on to the waterfall aspect of this build. What you're going to need is a hot glue gun and some hot glue tubes to go in the with water it. water pump of your choice. This was only £8 from Amazon, but you'll also need the tube to go with it. And this little cage that I made out of egg crate and cable ties, I'll explain that further through the video. Now I'm making this waterfall out of slate natural materials, so I'm going to need some slate some water pump filter mesh and another small amount of substrate let's crack on and build it so for the first step get your water pump now this one i found on amazon it was only eight pounds i'll leave some links in the description down below but take off the little cap filter and remember the tunnels we put in the back you just want to put the pump all the way down to the bottom until it comes out of the bottom then put the little funnel cap back on it and place the water pump where you want using the suction cups at the bottom of the actual water pump then attach the water pump hose ideally get a water pump hose that does have a really snug fit then we get the cage that I did make and I ran a bead of hot glue down one side to help adhere it to the side of the enclosure I get the pump mesh filter and put that in one side run it straight down into the back corner and pull the hose through the actual cage and i adhere the cage down with the pump inside just to stop any major debris getting to the actual pump and causing a blockage and to stop any animals from getting to the pump i also use it as a leverage to place the first few layers of slate now this is the waterfall build in itself and you can get as creative as you want to in this scenario i found this slate from off a mountain in the deepest part of the welsh snowdonia national park don't tell anybody i said that the smaller pieces can be used as accent pieces but you just want to make it so you've got a lovely little cascading rain of water coming down that waterfall i don't want it to be gushing but I want a nice trickle to be there. I broke the big slate pieces up with a hammer and I used a hot glue gun to adhere all the little bits of slate together, then wire cutters to cut down the actual tube so that it does trickle down the waterfall. So far, so good. But before we start planting and doing the substrate layers, we have to make sure these animals won't escape. We've got this tent mesh window screen and we have to adhere it to where the fogger will come out. There is a big hole there for the fog to escape. We need to make sure the animals can't get out. We use silicon and substrate to cover the silicon once again. We also do this to the tops of the tunnels for where the electrical cable goes in and where the fogger goes in. We can't be too safe because of the animals that are going in here. Now it's time for something a little different. We have this tent mesh window screen. We have to lay this down first. Normally this goes between the drainage layer and the substrate. However, we want it down first to line both over the top of the water pump and the bottom of the pond. Then it's time for our drainage layer. We're using BioLife bioactive filtration balls right now. It's just expanded clay balls, but they do come rather dirty. So get yourself a bucket of water. It's time we need to rinse off all of these bio balls just to make them nice and clean. You can see how dirty the water was to start with. You may need to give them a secondary rinse by scooping them out with a sieve and pouring even more clean water over the top of them. It's better to be safe than sorry. After that, we lift up the side of the mesh where the land is going to be and we pour the drainage layer down that side. After the drainage layer has gone into a suitable depth, deeper than the water pump itself, then start laying a rock barrier over the top of the mesh to keep the hydrables on the land area but not on the pond area. This also helps for decorative purposes and if an animal does get into distress and falls into the pond, it's got an easy way of getting out. Once you've done that, keep laying more hydro balls down into the land area and just keep stacking it until you do get your desired height. Recover the hydro balls with the mesh barrier and start adding your substrate. 
the substrate we're going to use is this tropical blend that I've made myself. It's full of everything needed to promote really healthy, really strong plant growth and to provide a healthy humidity level for the species provided. I have in the past made a video on how to make this substrate, not only how to make it, but why it's so good and every little detail involved in it. If you want to see that video, I'll leave it in a card in the top right corner of this video right now. But now it's time to start adding the substrate. Now in the very first layers I like to make it extremely hard and extremely compact simply because that's where your plant roots are going to be. Your plants will need some structure and we're trying to replicate the nature here so that is exactly how it is in nature so that's what we're going to do. We also fill the little plant pots in with the substrate we're going to use and we also plant into them as well. We like to add the substrate not just flat we like to add a big rake of high mounded substrate in the back corner so that we can stick the bigger plants back there but what plants are we going to use in this build as you can tell we do have quite the variety here we have collected these over the last couple of months they have all gone through valid quarantining procedures if you'd like to know more about quarantining plants let me know in the comment section down below but now it's time to start planting the plants we're going to start off with this vine plant and we're going to traipse it around the actual vine in the enclosure just because that will look amazing once the enclosure is matured really nicely then we move over to the hosta plant we like this one because it's big leaves it's going to mature to be big leaves as well the animals can find some shelter behind the leaves they can lay eggs under the leaves it's going to grow up and really fill that back area nicely then we've got this little bushy plant i have no idea what the actual name of the plant is we just like it because it's going to create a carpet along the whole bottom end of the substrate just creating a really nice look but it's time for the bromeliad i love bromeliads because they store water within the plants providing valuable drinking water for the species that we're going to be keeping in this enclosure so far it's really coming together nicely now you don't want to overpopulate your enclosure with plants at this time because they are going to start growing especially if you use a plant grow light we then added a little bit of moss in various areas just to add for the aesthetic appeal it also helps retain humidity because these exoterras do give off an awful lot of humidity but once it's all done it's planted give it a really good mist down a really good spray make sure everything's wet the background's wet the plants are wet it just helps for the plants to give them a little bit of a boost a kick start so to speak into settling down into their new substrate now with the amount of silicon we did put around the top end of this enclosure we wanted to make sure the lid still worked make sure the lock still closed and make sure it was a nice snug fit again we did drop lucky and everything was perfect then we connected up our fogging system to see if that worked how we wanted it to work and it really did it went down the tube really nicely it come out of the little hole that we made it's just worked absolutely perfect i'm so happy with how that's turned out but then time for the lights. We added the Reptile Systems Pro 10 LED lighting to this environment and it really has done amazing. Now time to fill up the pond area. The way we've designed this and the way we've put this together, it's not only gonna fill up the pond area, but also the drainage layer. The joy with that is gonna be just like nature with a water table underneath seeping through the substrate into the plants. So the plants will always have moisture. This way we like to leave it 24 hours just for any additional sediment that might be there. We like to let that settle and we always fill the water higher than the actual water pump itself. But now that that's done, we want to test the fogging system and oh my God, it looks absolutely amazing. It really does seep out that hole that we built in the back, comes over that plant there and down over the water area. It looks absolutely stunning. Now let's try the waterfall. And yeah, we kind of had a little bit of a problem here. It just squirted onto the glass. So it's time to start adding some extra slate that's gonna direct that water in a way that we like. I think that turned out extremely well. Now it's time to start adding the cleanup crew. We're seeding in some springtails and some tropical grey isopods from our colonies that we are growing. Now it's a simple case of the most important thing you can do to any bioactive enclosure. We need to leave it a month to allow for a bacterial bloom where the animal's not in there. A bacterial bloom happens with every brand new bioactive enclosure and if the bacteria does become extremely bad it can go into the humidity and your animal can breathe it in causing some extra problems. So leave the enclosure for a month enjoy it, water it, cycle it as normal, and then add your animal.
If you want to see how much this has actually cost me to make from start to finish, every little penny that I've spent, including the fuel to go and get everything, make sure you do hit subscribe because that's going to be one of our next videos. Let me know in the comments down below what animal are you going to be putting in the bioactive enclosure that you're going to start building. For me personally, that is an upgrade for that just there. That's my morning gecko colony that has grown and it is going into there. I hope you've thoroughly enjoyed this video and learnt an awful lot because I've enjoyed making it. I'd really appreciate it if you did hit that thumbs up button for me. If you are new around here, please consider subscribing. We are just over 12,000 subscribers. I am blown away. Thank you. Peace out.